Hello, hello, hello. Okay, cool. So, I'm gonna be doing the Cold War phase. That's like the GM turn for Free Spacer. Um, so, I am going to be going in and deciding what happened. Deciding what's going on with all the different factions in the background and on the sector map and figuring out what sort of systems and stuff I probably want to make and that sort of thing. Um, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, if you're watching the game and this will have some spoilers in it and stuff, especially for next week with the uh, um, upcoming contract negotiation and that sort of thing. So what we're looking at here is figuring out first, once you do the original Cold War phase, which is uh, we call Cold War phase zero zero, this is zero one, uh, you will be starting, back then you did the setup, and now you're going to be going with just the aftermath. So aftermath kind of judges what happens after um, you know the players influence fulfilling their their uh fulfilling their contract so after completing each contract begin the cold war for the aftermath of that contract okay so what are we doing disruption how much disruption did the events how did you know if the contract how much did it disrupt things? Um, yeah, I'd say it's, hmm. Okay, so what sort of events happen? Let's scroll over and check that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first things first. Oh, that's all the game. Okay, so this is some of the events that players haven't seen yet. Because it happened last time, I'm going to uh, move these on to the token layer so they can see what happened. Um, there you go. Okay, so there was a series of marquee attacks in New Sighton and Succulus. Political upset, marquee sees Rita Sana and the Seekers elected in Sulcus. Churches attacked, and professors allege criminal takeovers, all that sort of stuff. So the players don't know a lot of that. This also needs to be moved to Token Layer. Cool. Okay, cool. So now we are saying so what happened last time during the adventure during play, the players um chased around after the Marquis de Rue and um, checked is pretty much tried to figure out what they were doing and why they were doing their terrorist attacks and that sort of thing. They discovered uh, that they were researching uh, ancient aliens who had once lived in the Cassini sector and um, tracked down their uh, Track down their head base, where they were, where they're rooted out of. So that isn't secret, necessarily. Um, so I don't think it was minor though. We could add an event. I think we should add an event because it's kind of a public thing. Um, XMI would publicize this. So let's, um, okay, so let's make sure we've got option token level. We're going to move this down. And we're going to add a new little line in here. 
I need wines in this, it's always a pain. Pain to butt. Okay, and then we're going to take this. How long did it take them to do that? I think it took them three or four days. So we're just altering the timeline a little bit to represent um, what happened in the aftermath of that contract they did. Okay, so let's just write this in here. That's not the tool I tried to turn on to. Okay. Let me use my text tool this time. So, um, XMI raids on terrorist outpost. And of course, spell terrorist wrong. I can't spell anything, it seems. That's why I have spell checks. There we go. Okay, um. a new titan but um it was on finvar uh, outside there hold let's just write finvar so yes the uh, players um to Marky Outpost on um, Finvar attacked by XMI. There. That's legible. Here we go. Cool. So the players caused that thing. So that is going to cause some faction changes and stuff and we're recording that up here. So that's a new Titan. So we look at the chart right here. And see how much the inflation changed. So the client, it was a successful thing, so the client gets plus two in new Titan. Okay, so this is all on the GM overlay, because I don't really want the players seeing it. So that increases to five. And the marquee um, are targeted on that. So they go, oh, they are wiped out. So I've decided to keep things in general at zero if I think they're just down, but I think I think they're out of them. Or I think they're out of here entirely. So let's just erase that. If it lets me. Okay. 
The Mark Eater Root are routed from New Titan. That base is wiped out. Okay, um... Rivals? Are any rivals affected? Not really. Bystanders. For some reason I have bystanders listed at plus two, which seems a bit high. I should change that. How does what does it say? Bystanders are not targeted in a harmful way, but they contract to be targeted in beneficial ways and have trade for the Okay. Are they I'm gonna change this to plus one in the future. And then a negative one, because this that's that's too that's too high. This should be the opposite of the rivals. I'll write that down as something to do. Cause in practice that is way too much. They get as much as the client, which is way too much. Okay, so we're gonna go plus one, zero, negative one. So this is the sort of number changes I'm still making right now. Just a little things. I think the only group that really would have benefited who they dealt with was Sosperetta. They were running New Finvar and definitely the XMI base being routed from there would be helpful to them. Okay, uh, the Seekers are technically there. Um, I think that they are, are they rivals of XMI? guess that's up to me to determine. I don't think I list that information. I think the Seekers are we're not big fans of them because they're not even supposed to be here. And yeah, so it did this because these are rival factions. So Spirit is kind of just a bystander that got good things, but losing the criminal organization who was probably buying from them did not help the 8th the eighth avatar. And um, the Seekers, because of all the extra military stuff, maybe they were just knocked down a little bit. So I, I put them as a rival as well. So, the players affected New Titan. They didn't have a big effect on anywhere else because they didn't go anywhere else. They stayed in New Titan the whole time. They haven't even folded space yet. So a new crew will get to do that sort of thing. So the next stage is undertakings. Cool, cool. Okay. So let's look at that then. Okay, so, okay. Um. Okay, so undertakings, the activities and stuff that factions do during this phase. And, um... Undertakings begin with the significance of the furthest from the hub. Okay, so the one with the highest number away from the hub is New Titan. The one we were just talking about. How convenient. Okay, you can see that they're all labeled at this. So New Titan is PN uh, Prime North 62. So they are right here. We'll be adding new systems as we move forward, but there's no reason to simulate them now. So, um,. Before the factions perform an undertaking, they need influence. They begin the influence from the setup or aftermath. Add additional influence from the faction's presence in the system. The faction with the greatest influence is the dominant faction. All of their challengers. Okay, so profit should be before order. Oh, yeah, yo, yo, all these little problems. Oh, well, that's what we're here for. They should do this for everybody in the system. It's really weird. Okay, so I need to split split order so we can decide. You should do choose which system to do and then which faction to do first. 
Oh, okay. Okay, so profit before system order is for, should be first, then profit, and then faction undertaking order. Faction initiative. Okay. Good to know. Guess I'm going to be working on this a little bit today. Okay, so first we start with XMI, and we're going to start with doing their profit. So, add additional influence from the faction's presence in the system. The faction with the greatest influence is the dominant faction. Okay, so dominant faction in a prime. This is prime north. Did I say province? Anyways, prime north gains five. Woo! Okay, they're rich now. So they got ten. And challengers all gain... Oh no, they gave four. We're not in the core. Well, that's not a big difference. So nine. So Spiretta as a challenger gets two. Let's see, see why getting ahead is helpful. Another two for here. For the Seekers. And Eighth Avatar only he also gains two, which only brings him to three. Okay, so so we could do that for every group, or we could do a per system, I guess. Anyway, so we have to come up with the agenda. Okay, let's. I think I'm going to. Okay, I have to clarify how this is done. So you should do profit for all. And then we and then agendas for all. It's too confusing otherwise. And then undertakings in order. Honestly, this is probably the least tested aspect because, well, things... Okay. So. I think there's room for all these on this one line. Let's look at Seculus. So, Seculus is also prime, so they gain four there. So, that's seven. Oh no, they weren't the greatest. They were a challenger. The mines, the challenger, the seekers run seculus. Okay, so they only gain two. So three plus two is five. The seekers who are the dominance. Seven plus four is eleven. Okay, let's move the seekers over here. Move these guys down. Wrong one. There we go. Okay, so Seekers XMI Eighth Avatar and the Marquis. Oh, and the Marquis are getting butts kicked. So they're a challenger, they get two. Marquis get two from the Prophet. Okay, so the Marquis actually still run Riasona, so I'm going to move them into the primary location here. Makes it easier for me to look at. And this is also prime region area, so they only gained four. And then these are challengers, so they gained two. So this is influence. This represents how much influence they have in the system. So depending on the little letter next to it depends on the type of influence they have. So we have a tide. I think that means that everybody is a challenger. Let's see. That's the greatest influence and all others are challengers. Interesting. 
I've got to write that in how that it's dealt with. So, um, I think I'm going to treat the two greatest as both dominant. They're a pair dominance. House Luria and the Seekers are really powerful here. And anyways, as I was saying, the type of influence is listed as a little letter. So C is a cultural, M is military. Oh, this was even hub. Oh, okay. So I'm going to be increased by one more. Oops, I didn't see that this was a hub sector. Yes, so hub sectors are richer, so you gain more. So as I was saying, um, what we're looking at here is M is for military, uh, C is for cultural, um, Yes, I kept Thales here because I thought 8th Avatar wouldn't have been routed by the action that had happened. T is for technology, because um, they were kind of cultured out, technologically out, so I'm going to allow them to come back. And then the hub, so they're now at 3. Um, this is some of the judgment you kind of have to make. Luria is really powerful in uh, Hub East 23 in Dominico. Um, House Luria is technically supposed to be in charge of this system entirely. Oh, XMI got a beating here though. They're both. So their corporate holdings, they're pretty much relying on Luria to get done what they're going to get done. As you can see, as you move towards the hub, Luria, House Luria, who is technically in charge of this area, it becomes much more powerful. Like they got 17 culture in this area. Plus, Peretta lost a lot to um, uh, the Eighth Avatars hacking and criminal enterprise stuff, so. They almost went out in some of these, but I decided since the university is still there, that they were running the university and intelligence networks and stuff, the intelligence networks would just be cut off and they would have a lot. But they are not doing healthy in Giovini. Ooh. If Lurian wants to knock everybody else out here, they totally can. I think they might decide to crack down though on Eighth Avatar. That would make sense. And they, they're one order, right? And that is what we're getting into right now. So we have done the profit phase. Works a lot better when you do it all at the same time rather than per section. Okay, so let's do all the agendas then. I'm liking this route. Okay, so. Okay, okay, so what do we want? What does each group want? So, um... Okay, so last time... Uh, Zumimas Gaiji, which is the Zumimas Intergalactic, is the player's patron. They wanted to establish a powerful centralized sector has a political block of leadership to gain greater to push towards the IPS towards greater ties. Okay, let's rewrite that a little bit. That's horribly written, Christoph. What did you do? Also I've switched this a little bit, so I'm gonna be doing it this way. Let's just 
Okay, so. So, establish a powerful centralized power. Establish a centralized power base for the sector. That's really what they're trying to do. all this stuff about how they want the independent people's soul to be more centralized that sort of thing but I don't think that really matters let's just do this part so establish a centralized power base in the sector okay how are they doing that in this phase um uh, mm hmm how are they doing that? So last time they routed out um, Marquita Roo because of the terrorist attacks. So this time they are going to um, establish centralized power base in the sector. Um, Increase holdings through um, consumer. I spell consumer. Consumer. Okay, so they're stepping back. They did their military thing a bit last time. They got rid of the Marquita Rue and New Titan, which is their major power base. And now they're just going to kind of make, make good relationships with the people. Okay, so. Last time they tried to... Um, rest control of these colonies got distracted by these aliens so I think whatever is dealing with this is aliens I didn't do as well last time but definitely I should have been bringing the aliens in on this one so build truly independent nation away from IPS control is their main thing and what are they doing this sector on this this is um Uh, build a power, build power base. So they want to centralize and succulus. Thing. Let's get the name. Okay, it's actually called Sulcus. Centralize in Sulcus. While um, gathering information on ancient aliens. Yes, so. They believe that these ancient aliens have something to do or are important to this sector, so that's what they're looking in on. But they're not making big moves there, partially because they need to um, because they need to centralize and make sure that their power stays. Okay, so um, so they were trying to salvage themselves all around. I think they did a pretty good job of that. If we look over here, Marquita only controls. Oh, they control Riasona, not 
Sulcus. Okay, the Seekers now control Sulcus. Oh, that's a big difference. Okay, so let's change this information. So they're, they moved their base to here. So Riasona. So this is some of the stuff that happened because of the events. Um, they originally were controlling or trying to take control of Sulcus. Um, but it looks like they were kind of driven out or they lost out to the Seekers. Seekers are a church. They're building basically a... Uh, so we're doing PN037. So zero three seven. And it's called Riasona. So let's make sure that's where they are. Uh, XMI still got most control in New Titan. So that's still their headquarters. But they had to move their headquarters to Riasona because that's where they have the most influence. Okay. I'll have to make sure that's specifically listed in the book as uh, Headquart HQ in sector with most resource, most influence. I kind of like the idea of it moving around. It's kind of cool. Okay, so 8th Avatar, where do they have the most influence? Double check that. 8th Avatar. Um, hmm. They don't have most influence anywhere, so I can put it wherever I kind of want. They were having a new Titan, but new Titan's not that great for them right now. Um because all the crackdown. Oh, where are they highest in comparison to those ahead of them? The Seekers run two whole places by themselves. I think, oh, they have a lot of influence up there. I think they're going to be in Morosk, HW34. Let's just copy that, because I'm not going to remember this. I'll remember that, but I'll never remember how to spell this word. You come up with cool words that fit things, and then you have a hard time remembering how to spell them, eh? Okay. Did I say 37? 34. Okay. Cool. Okay, so. They are now here. They want to build a sector wide criminal syndicate. Um, so they want to expand uh, information network. Presence to all populated systems. Right? So that means they're going to be moving into these less populated um, hubward groups that the Seekers are entirely running on their own. I don't think. 8th Avenue or 8th Avatar is gonna like that so they're gonna move into there and probably into Riasona so that's the sort of undertakings we're gonna be looking at them doing okay so next is Seekers of the Return okay so this is actually pretty good But I think they are going to realize that they're doing very well in some of the sectors. Like, I think they're going to concentrate power on Amina and Aglidus in the hub. 
because controlling these two systems. So, establish a sector of faith and discover hidden clues of the return. Yep, that's fine. That's what they do. Um, they didn't really do much exploration before. I think it's going to be um, build power bases. Okay, which systems? I might have to move where their core is too. Oh no, they're in Alina. Okay, 15. This is Ecludius. In a Cluteus. and which one was it again? Hub West 15. Hub West 15. Okay. I really need a. Uh... I really need a chat to help remember things, don't I? HS. Double check that because I had to move a couple of them when I fixed the map after the last uh, time. Yep, HS 30. Cool. Switch out to defend. I think they already have a power base there. So they're going to be trying to defend against that. So when 8th Avatar comes in, they're going to be like, nope. Okay. We're almost done. Two more factions left, and then we'll have everybody's agendas all set up. And then we'll start just moving through the different, the different undertakings. I don't know why it's called a task here at this point. Oh, because oh, it's the task for the undertaking. Okay, cool. Okay, so House of Valeria. Maintain control and order in Cassini sector to further, to further sibling influence of Articularium. Okay. A little bit long. I spawn civilizing wrong? It's probably just American spelling. Yeah. Z versus S. Okay, maintain control maintain control and order in Cassini sector to further. I don't think we care why so much. Let's shorten that. Okay, so um they were all about regulating and stuff before before they really knew what was going on in the sector. Um track down and oppress what's it called suppress track down and suppress criminal elements including I don't do that. I have a terrible typing style, it seems. Marquita Roo. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, the Eighth Avatar.
Okay, so they're not a big fan of the Seekers of Return. Seekers of Return are pretty much part of a spacer faction, and them gaining a bunch of power in this area is not... It's not House Lyria or any of the Articula Diomedes idea of a good-ass good time. Not really what they do. So they're like, oh, no, no, no. Tarnished Interregnum once kept us as their... As their secretary slaves, we're not going to go with that. So they're going to push it out. So House of Sosperetta is less of a... Okay, so let's see. Where are they powerful now? I think they actually run a sector. Because I'm pretty sure New Titan shouldn't be where their headquarters is. Oh, sorry I'm swinging around so much. House of Laria should definitely run in the hub. Yeah, that's where they get all their power anyways. So, who Seekers run? Okay, so... So, Spreta is... Ooh. They're most powerful in Fails. They have a good relationship with XMI, so I think that's not going to bother them. HS12 Fails. Let's copy that word. Double check that that's where they are. And it's hub south 12. Okay, scroll all the way here. No, because they're listed as hub south Alina, which they got routed right out of last time. Okay. Okay, so the Seekers of Return are not doing that well. No, oh, this is the Seekers of Return. They are an Alina. When you click on the wrong thing, eh? Am I spelling Alina correctly? Come up with clever names. Alenia. It's more like Alenia than Alina. Okay. like that. Okay. Let's go to the faction we're actually working on, which is House Sosperetta. Everyone else is done. Okay, so. House Sosperetta looks like they were involved in Prime, but they've moved further back into how they can. Okay, so. Okay, so we've discovered that House Sospreta, due to some player input and some of what I really wanted them to be doing before, because I kind of wishy-washy, they were one of my factions, I kind of wishy-washy them. So they're going to be more about information management, more about, you know, spies and information networks and stuff. Okay, so... They want to build, what do they really want? They want to, to control and manage the information network, information Control and manage Cassini sector via
by controlling information. Okay, so that means they want to do lots of spy stuff, discover new things. So, let's arrow focus this a little bit more. So they want to discover secrets of the ancient aliens that well that once controlled, once occupied, once populated Okay, control and edit continue you're controlling the information control information. How about this by having a hand in all information networks. Okay, discover the secrets of ancient aliens that once populated the sector. And expand presence. Go with S. That looks better. Presence alongside allies. Like XMI and House Luria, are their allies? They're just gonna go where those guys are and establish their own influence. Probably culturally and technologically. Okay, cool. Let's see. Okay, nice. So now we need to figure out every fact. Okay, so this is where the order thing should be. It's a lot better to do them one at a time. Okay, so back to the map. Every phase. Each faction's influence in each system performs a single undertaking. Every undertaking is a task which the factions perform to which the faction performs to drive their agenda. Each represents a category of action. Do, 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 do. Okay, so. So, certain, some factions can do some things, some can do others. Choose one undertaking for each faction in the system and expand one influence for each task die to perform the task. Okay. I didn't write down what each means, do I? Oh, it's down in the outcome. Interesting. Might need to have a little more info up here. Oh, what that does. So we got a list of undertakings. They can restructure, they can do a venture, they can invest if they're dominant. They can quarrel with other challengers if they're a challenger. They could subvert another challenger if they're a challenger. They can expand and they can suppress if they're the dominant. Okay, so compare the faction's influence to that of the threat. If the threat influence is weak, 
to the acting faction's influence. Ooh. Then it grants advantage. Okay, cool. So when you restructure, you change your type. So the only way to change from, say, economic and new titan to technological or military is by restructuring. And when you restructure, you're also basically doing a system thing. So the, the threat of each of them is based on the system itself or whether they're a challenger or dominant or multiple challengers. There's the difficulties of each threat. So what do... So we start with the lowest influence group in New Titan and they do something. What do they want to do? I think they want to subvert the dominant. Or do they want to subvert seekers? Or actually they subverting is that would be reducing the dominant, according to this. Yeah, I need a definition up here. I'm a little bit of work needs to be done in this section. Oh, that's unsurprising. Okay, cool. So what do, what is the, so this is the sector that the players are starting in and they need to, so we have had some eighth avatar guys in this section and they, I think they want to make some money. Um, they do a vec, a venture, what does a venture do? Yeah, I think they're just going to try to gain, it doesn't make sense for them to really quarrel with anyone in particular. They don't really have, because what is there, what are they trying to do? Let's go look at this again. The eighth avatar. Expand information network and preference to all populated systems. Oh, maybe they should expand. They don't have a lot in New Titan though. They need to expand to Riasona. It's best for them to do that from the hub. They also need to expand to Alina and Aculus. Okay, so they're just going to venture. Okay, to form a venture. I have to decide how many of their dice they're going to spend. So the diff, charted but inhabitable, local and unchallenged, no, foreign but influenced. Local with challengers is regular three. They only have three tech, which sucks for them. Hmm, do they take the risk? Well, they have to do something, but that's the system difficulty. And there's nobody lower than them because they're going as challenge. So regular is what they have to roll. So they have to basically blow everything. No game five. Okay, so that's good if they succeed. If they fail, they're out. Or their target gains one. So we'll probably do something like that. So what we, we have here is we have different types of failures. So I, I get a little bit of control because I get to choose this. So they're going to blow all three. Because they're doing basically tech attacks. So they go all out on basically trying to trying to gain a bunch of money. Uh, we have to decide what their venture is and what sort of thing they're doing, but they're most likely, um, they're just trying to make money. So they're doing some online, behind the scenes, um, drug dealing and that sort of thing. I mean, they are mafia. They use online, they use their data flow presence to sell information and buy this and that and sell um, stuff that's not allowed in New Titan. Uh, probably because of the crackdown on XMI, they're probably um, spreading information, 
buying and selling uh, leftover Marquis de Rue uh, assets and that sort of stuff. So they have three. So we're going to uh, perform a task. Okay, so they have three task dice. That gains the difficulty is three. And here we go. Oh, they failed! Oh, that sucks. Okay. Oh, that sucks so much for them. Oh. Okay, so they can't lose one. They can't waste. Um, target gains one. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, farm a new faction. I don't think I want to add another one. Uh, I think they're just out. Wow. So they move all to an influence system. They move all to an uninhabited system. Well, they don't have any left. So that just basically knocks them out. Unless I want to f have them defect and start a whole new... That's interesting. Farm a new faction. Introduce a new foreign faction. No, I'm just going to eliminate them. They're gone. All that. So, crack down. The crack down, man. Bad for them. Okay. So, what's next? The seekers are next. What do they want to do? Well, their agenda... Wow, risk big and lost it. Seekers return. Um, they need to defend their power bases in those groups. So this group doesn't have a lot. They probably wouldn't mind sending... Um, I think they're going to do another venture. It would make sense for them to do a venture. Um, I don't see any reason that they'd want to uh, restructure. Uh, they can't invest, they're not the dominant. They could try to take from Sosperetta or try to subvert the dominant group. They might try to do that. That would make sense. Okay, so they're going to subvert XMI. XMI gained a lot of power. They totally took over New Titan. Uh, they're tracking it down. So they're probably going to do some propaganda stuff. Talk about how freedom and stuff uh, protest XMI's control. And that is a faction attack, I believe. So that's Oh no, that's 4v4. They wouldn't do that. It's too difficult for them. I think they are going to... Um, instead, they are going to quarrel with Sospreta and... Um, basically hit them with the knowledge... Knowledge versus kind of thing. So they're also going to spend all their cash to do this. And that gives them 4v3. Okay, so let's perform the task. Four dice. Oh, big success. Look at that. Look at those tens. Wow. Holy crap. Only one failure on those. Two, two tens and another success. Bam. That is big win for the Seekers. Okay, so. They coroed. They're going to take five. Some Sosperetta. Holy crap. So actually reduce the spread out of one. Oh. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so that was a crit. So uh, the faction's influence is created by two. So all of a sudden the seekers come out of nowhere. This massive cultural campaign and religious fervor. That's definitely an event. Okay, so. The order that we're supposed to be doing it in is okay so I'm gonna have to look at this because now Sosperta has one in tech yeah so I might want to add a new type of tasks that they can do like a support where they like help out the main groups so I'm gonna add that because that would be really cool I call it support and when they do a support um, it's you don't have a threat I think it, it's got to be a, a simple test and they're just going to um, gain to and give their supporter group one so that increases to three and this increases to ten so it's also brought up, gets their ass kicked by the seekers in a propaganda war and responds by doubling down on their support of XMI. Um, I suspect that Susperetta is going to be gunning for the Seekers soon, because that was harsh. Okay, XMI has a lot of power in this sector. Uh, it's their best system, I mean. So what are they gonna do with all that money? Okay, so they don't want to suppress everybody because Sussbread is supporting them. Um, they could invest. They can do as in, they can invest or suppress or expand or venture or restructure. There's no reason for them to restructure from an economic group. Unless they actually want to take over the government, that would be interesting. So they're going to restructure. So how much do they gain by restructuring? They gain three. Restructuring is a system based. Difficulty three, so they're gonna they're gonna spend four on this and them down to six. No, they're gonna spend three, bring them down to seven, and they are going to. Um, They don't want to risk their leadership. Although they probably should. Yeah, let's let's do it. They're gonna risk their leadership a little bit. And try to form the government of the sector by switching to culture. So they basically get so spread as help to do this. That's what the support undertaking is going to represent. Okay, cool. Um, they're going to get the system, which is local with challengers, which is three. And they're spending four dice. And 
and they fail. Oh. Okay. Looks like they are failures. They can lose one more. They can. Target can gain one, which doesn't make sense because there is a system. Okay. They could introduce another foreign faction. It means faction from outside. At three. They could withdraw, which doesn't make any sense. Okay, so. Oh, I think, yeah, they, they they don't get to change type. They stay economic. And they are bringing in Luria. As a government. So Luria comes in and takes over the government of a new Titan as a stabilizing factor. The Seekers have a buttload of power right now. And yeah, things are not looking good. New Titan is crazy. Okay. Oh, let's go to Sulicus. Sulcus, Sulcus, come Sulcus. Okay, so the Marquis de Rue are the smallest group here. And they are going to, um, I think they're still mad at XMI. They're gonna attack XMI, which is quarreling. Try to take some stuff from them. Um, they're gonna go all out culture war against XMI's culture war mm -hmm. yeah so they do a bunch of propaganda about um, oh I got some interest So, hey, hey Dan. No, this is a uh, part of, uh, this is basically the GM turn for a game called Free Spacer, game that uh, I'm putting out. And um, I'm gonna be putting out the game soon. It's uh, basically I'm doing promo and stuff before I can kickstart it. Anyway, so this is the, uh, this is kind of like the GM turn I call it, the Cold War phase. And you basically, deal with all the factions in the background and kind of set the background for the players upcoming turn uh, on Mondays I run this game with uh, a big variety of with with uh, multiple players and they play a crew of the starship uh, the FRS auspicious and they like fly around and do these different things they were in New Titan before which uh, and their patron is XMI, Zuni Musk IG. And uh, despite their work, they managed to drive away the Marquis de Rue, as we saw earlier, but the Seekers have kind of come in and taken over. They virtually run the place now, so big deal. Maybe XMI can send some, uh, some forces from Sulcus maybe withdraw entirely to New Titan and uh, take control again. We'll see. So right now, anyways, I'm taking the, uh, gonna deal with what the Marquis de Rue are going to be trying to do. They're basically propaganda war against XMI, talking about how XMI wiped them out in New Titan and attacked them and being all terrible. Anyways, thanks Dan for your interest. Any other questions, I'll totally answer them. But let's get on with doing this. So, Marquita Rue, they are going to quarrel and they're going to spend it all. They're, they know they're probably going out. So they're just going to spend it all and hope they can win 
against another challenger, which if I look at the difficulty in the book, is three difficulty. So task dice three, threat dice three. D did they win? Oh. oh, they are getting spanked so hard. Yeah, I'd love to see you. That'd be really cool. Uh, you'll get to see what's happening. Like, uh, I'll probably be setting up a, a contract tomorrow. I'll probably run a second Cold War phase where I, I figure out what the contract is going to be, and then they're going to negotiate that contract this Monday and then head out into space to do that. It has something to do with ancient aliens that the uh, Sosperetta is so interested in. Cool. Okay, so, Wow. That did not work out well for them. So let's look at our failures. Woo. So um, that dropped them to zero just to do the task. So um, let's look at what they can fail. They could lose one. No, they can't. Um, they're at negative one, which... Oh, I don't think they'd form a new faction. They could bring in another faction. I think I think they're just out. They're gone. So they're gone. They attempt to um, deal with the Seekers, and they wipe themselves out. Big propaganda thing, and just nobody believes them, I guess. Okay, so Keith Avatar. They do have some power here. Um... What do they want to do? I think as a tech group, they don't want to get wiped out like everybody else. Uh, they could expand. That might be interesting. I don't have a lot of power though. If they expand and they can ship 50% of original to target system. I don't have enough power to do that. So they could quarrel. I think they are going to attempt to, can they subvert? I think they're going to quarrel with XMI as well. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Okay, so 3v3 roll again. Oh, oh just a second. The other was Culture versus culture. No. This is technology versus culture. So they don't get any advantage. Oh, that's not a good quarrel. Okay. I think they're going to go 3v3. Hope to succeed. That did not go well. Okay. They are down to one tech. Eighth avatar is not doing well this round. Um, so I think I think their target gains one. See that's uh, as you can see Dan and any other followers or people watching on YouTube. Um, they just have a leak. So they drop down, but they raise XMI up by one. Okay, so XMI, they're doing decently here, but I think they want to subvert the Seekers. I don't think they're particularly happy about this religious group from the Tarnishade tribe. Now a bunch of spacers basically running this place. So I'm gonna to totally subvert them. They are challengers, so they can do that. And what are they? Culture versus culture, so there's no bonus. And they're against the dominant, which is four. Okay, I think they're going five v four. Woo! So they're gonna blow. F All the cultural stuff. They're going to basically propaganda subvert them. Okay. Oh, a 10. One success. They succeeded. Whew. Barely. 
Okay, so subvert gain two and reduce the dawn imp by three. So that, that hurt them. Because they didn't regain everything, but they did reduce the dominant by, what did I say? Reduce their dominant by three. So that is eight. Okay, so the Seekers, the Seekers want to control everything, don't they? What is their agenda? They want to defend their power bases. I think they're worried about having people expand there, especially from the hub. Okay, so they're going to expand, which in this case actually means shipping... Um, Shipping off to uh, Elena or Uncleus. So they're gonna ship off a bunch of their stuff. They're doing pretty well here. So it will cost them th Difficulty's gonna be three for the system. Oh, but it's not local, it's foreign. Foreign but influenced. Okay, that's only difficulty two. Okay, so that's gonna be easy. Uh, okay, so they are going to expand to Enchiladas. So what they do is they, uh, difficulty two, so they're going to spend three? I think three is a good number. Uh, they'll still run everything if they spend four. I think they're going to spend four. Okay, so a task, four task dice, two difficulty, so two, and against system, there is no advantage, submit, okay, what, why did this show it, why did that show a 20 sided die, it shouldn't be a 20 sided die, okay, they succeed, three successes, awesome, so they expand, they send 50% of their original, which is four. So they increase this to 13, but they gain one each and each. So this is two into 14 and they are going up to five. Okay, expand is pretty good. Okay, so host host Beretta are, they're tech in this section and what is, Tech versus military and Navy does well. Okay. Maybe they're going to go after the Marquis. Marquis to rerun the sector. Now they have, they're more powerful, but they could subvert them. So I think they're going to subvert them. They're not a big fan of these guys being here. Um, they could support the XMI and have the XMI do it. Hmm. But technology works without good advantage for the military. So they are going to spend all three. And so they get four because they get advantage versus four because they're dominant. And they're basically hacking the hell out of them, trying to knock them out. Oh. They fail. Oh my god. I've had a lot of fails on these. Okay, so they're withdrawing for Riasona. Oh, concentrating power decently. Okay, so XMI. They probably would go after them as well, but expensive and dangerous going after them what could they all say could they do as a challenger oh they could expand somewhere else they could they know they've lost that maybe they're going to expand to new titan double down yeah
Where they abandoned this system? I think they're gonna withdraw a little bit. You know, it kind of makes sense. They're gonna send a bunch of their forces back to New Titan so they can continue being the dominant there. Okay, so, um, for, this makes the difficulty would be uh, foreign, but influenced, difficulty two. They're gonna spend three on that, leave one there just in case they don't Okay. Zero successes. Oh, getting their ass kicked, man. That is terrible. Okay, so they failed. Oh, look at that. Okay, so. They're moving all to the target, to an influence system, which is nearby. Gets a little bit of what they wanted, but they're totally out of here. They're just totally gone. So that increases that to seven. So they're now equal to the Seekers, but they virtually, they basically withdrew entirely from Riosona. Woo! Wow, everything's changing. Might be a bit swingy but it seems to be working pretty good. Okay, so what do the Marquis want to do? they got no influence, nobody's bothering them. Um, do they want to expand back to New Titan? I don't know if it helps them at all. They could expand to Succulus. They did have power there before they were wiped out. So, what can they do? They're the dominant. They can invest. I think that's... What is their agenda? I think it makes sense that they'd want to do that. Centralize and reassign. Yeah, so they're going to invest. It's what they want to do. So, they're going to invest. And investment... Cost. What's the difficulty of investment? Local and unchallenged is difficulty two. So they're going to invest four. V2. That's all. Oh my god, they failed. Oh, I'm so many failures. Okay. So this military group tries to. They, they should have probably, uh, wow, okay, they should have probably restructured and making like more of a proper government, but they stay military and they try to invest and it just goes terribly. Ooh, okay. Since it went so terribly, they failed. Negative one. So, they could lose one more. Uh, they don't have a target. They can form a new faction. I think they just lose one more. Wow. So they, they attempt to build new bases and that sort of thing, and they just get their butts kicked. They just they just lose a pile of their forces and their father influence in Riosona. Building colonies and stuff with military forces doesn't work particularly well, I guess. Okay. Wow. Okay, so Masarok. Masarok. Masarzek. Masarzek. Okay. We'll be starting with the 8th Avatar. So the 8th Avatar is got a little bit of power here, but they're not doing great. They could do a venture. Venture is versus the system. And local with challengers. Is 
a regular three. They have five. Yeah. Or they could... I think they want to actually subvert. Who are they going to subvert? Where are the Seekers? I think the Seekers are getting power in a lot of places. I think I want to do the Seekers. Okay, so they're going to subvert the Seekers. Okay, so they go after the Seekers. They're dominant, which gives them four, makes it four difficulty. And I think they gotta spend it all. They're getting knocked out really quick. But they get a big win. Okay, good. They got a crit. So they subvert them. They reduced the dominant by three. So the dominant they were going after was the seekers. Oh, they're tech versus culture. One second. I don't think, no. No, only economy and military gain against culture. Okay, so they reduced them by three, dropping them down to six. So they basically hack, hack their, tele, their, their church information systems, pull out all their secrets, do that sort of thing. Um, they spent it all, so they spent that five that you see listed there. And with a crit, they gain from subversion, they gain two, plus two more, plus because it's at, they go up to six. They are now equal to the Seekers. Because they were down at zero, so they gain two, two for complete. And two more for all criticals. Boom, look at that. Okay, things have changed a little. So the Seekers, the Seekers are pissed. They're going to do some cultural stuff, talk about the evils of this crime family, that sort of thing, culture versus tech. Oh, they're gonna get a boom bonus. Okay, so. They're going to spend four because they don't want to get knocked out. Versus they spend four, but they get advantage. They get five. And they're doing a coral. Submit versus three because it's a challenger. Yes, because they're culture versus tech. Oh my god. They have so many dice and they failed that. How did they even do that? Look at that. Oh. Oh, the negative dice came up and they got like one success on any of the dice. Ouch. Okay. The Seeker spent four doing this. Bring them down to two. And they failed their quarrel they failed their attacks on on the mafia Morosk does not like them so negative one so that's just a fail what do they get they can waste the target could gain one they could just end up supporting them that'd be kind of cool um i don't really want to create a new faction i don't want to introduce another one either let's just increase it Eighth Avatar is looking really good in Morosk. Hell, if Luria fails here, they could take over. Try to form a government next time or something. That's crazy. This place is becoming lawless. So the church just looks like a bunch of jerks here. Wow. Okay. So, Luria. They're the dominant. They are going to... I don't think they like anybody that's here. They're going to suppress because they got to. So multiple challengers is four difficulty. They have nine though. So they're going to, their culture versus tech and culture. So they're going to gain an advantage because one of them does include it. I'm going to make sure I write that in. Okay, so they spend five, which is a total of six with the advantage. 
and the difficulty is four. And they succeed. Okay, so they suppress everybody. So let's drop them down by the amount they spend. So gives them four. And let's see what the effect is. Okay, what's the outcome? Successful suppression, gain two, and reduce all local challengers by two. So they lose a bit in that massive political attack, but they wipe out the Seekers. I think the Seekers technically stay, though, because I'm not withdrawing them as an action, so they drop down to zero. But it didn't go as well against them. Oh. Oh, and they gained two more. Awesome. Oh, no. They only get a regular success, not a complete. Okay, so it didn't go as well as it could have. Because they're, they have the eighth avatar, eighth avatar is like cyber mafia, so they're just on their butt. But the seekers are virtually useless now. Okay, so the seekers are in Honchalus and in Alina. They're doing really, really, really well. So what are their their goals? They're supposed to be defending their power base here. So I guess they're just going to invest? Wow. Okay, so they're likely to gain a lot of money. So they're unopposed here. So local and unchallenged is difficulty two. And how much can they gain? They can gain up to seven. Okay, they could gain up to seven. So they wouldn't want to spend more than seven. That'd be a lot. So they actually want to gain. So let's have them spend five. Makes sense, right? Okay, five military. No, it, that doesn't make... They're a military force they should restructure and become the government, which means turning it over. You know, convert themselves from a military force that's just in this area, in this, this less populated system into a proper government. So they're restructuring. Okay, cool. So restructuring, local and unchallenged. Um, They can gain three. They don't want to probably spend too much more than that. I think they'll spend four. Because they really want to succeed in this. So four versus two. And boom. Digital dice are funny. Okay. So they gain three. And they get to become culture. Okay, so they're a pretty decent government. 13. They lost one influence from that action. They'll gain profit next time. And then now culture. So I'll probably be putting an event in about how they gained... Um, I should probably be putting these in soon. But... Yeah. Okay, so they're going to form government there. Um, in the... I should probably be writing down the events at the same time I do this, but, well, I'll do it after, I guess. So, in Alina, they're going to do the same thing. And attempt to form the government. Yeah. So, they're putting down roots. So, that's going to cost them three. And they're trying to be this. So I'll just write that down now. And let's do this. Perform a task. Three. Submit. Two. Whew. 
Look at this, the threat dice are zero, so that's the only reason it succeeded, because this is not a great roll. But, two successes, unfortunately it's not a complete, but they change their type and gain three. So we change their type, and they're gonna move up to six. That's decent. Okay, it looks like their capital sh should be Enchiladas, though. On Enchiladas. Okay. Woo! Okay, 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 okay. They are farming governments and making your homes in these systems. Nice. Okay, 8th Avatar. They are going to attempt to undermine... They're going to attempt to subvert XMI. They really shouldn't do that, though. It's too dangerous. Well, I think they're going to do, they do some, some dealing, some technological cells, some cyber crime. So, it hits local, but challengers, that's regular difficulty. just withdrawn okay so they're trying to do well here but they could get smacked down by uh, XMI okay so sauce Beretta. they are allies with XMI they're probably not gonna support but I think they want to do a venture as well actually it might make sense for them to expand somewhere Yes, where are they powerful right now? They could try to expand a new Titan. Yeah, let's do that. That makes sense. So they want to bolster their forces a new Titan. So the difficulty of that is uh, foreign with influence. Foreign with influence, ordinary two. And they're going to um, I think they're gonna spend three to do that. They don't wanna risk too much. So they're sending some tech researchers and stuff to New Titan. That's the plan. So three, three, two. They succeed, send 50% of their original, which is three more. And that's it. I believe that's all they get for expanding base success. Yep. Okay. So they bolster their forces there. XMI definitely from Thales is also going to do that, but they're gonna spend more money. How much are they going to spend? Um, I think they're going to spend... What are they at now? 11? They spend 5. Um, then they're going to be down to... 6 here. That's okay. Yeah. Difficulty is two. Three successes. Awesome. So they are down to six. They're supporting their forces in New Titan. An expansion move. So because it's this, um, each gets to go up one, so that 50% of 11 is five more here. That moves that to 12. Look at that. They're definitely in charge. But Luaria thinks they're in charge. And they gain one more because we had a complete success. That goes to 13. 
And here, they also go up Y1, because that's what it says there. So there you go, seven. Ooh. So definitely powerful behind the throne. They didn't manage to become government, end up bringing in Luria instead. Luria experts to run things. Okay, cool. Okay, three more left. Now we're gonna take a break. Maybe there's some events after that. Okay. Okay, so, eighth, av eighth avatar. That's a bit of power here. Luria is really powerful here, so they're totally gonna subvert them. Um, expensive though. They could core with XMI, try to drive them out of a hub. That would be a powerful thing to do for them. Let's try that. Okay, so they are going to spend, f they're doing tech versus culture. No, nope, no advantages. So they're gonna spend four versus three, because it's a challenger. Four successes. Oh, they succeed well. Okay, and looks like Domenico is might lose its XMI power. Okay. Look at that, it's because only one negative on those and a 10 on the others. All successes on the task dice. That's awesome. Okay, so they succeed in a quarrel. So they take five and then they gain two. So that's gonna drop XMI to zero. Actually, that wipes them out because they won't be able to do anything this time. They don't have a chance to make any profit. So they're just gone. So they just like pirate all their stuff and everything is terrible. And then they gain two for crit. Okay. Luria is probably mad as hell and not going to take it anymore. Okay, so they are going to try to take out that challenger and they got money to do it. So they can do that via by, by uh, suppressing. See what they can do with Dominant. They could expand. That's not going to help them. They got this big threat, this mafia. They can restructure, become a proper government, since they are actually in a navy. That might be a good move to restructure. Oh, I guess they're going to have to restructure. Because XMI was kind of the government here. Luria is going to take over for them. I mean, I guess they could have supported and we could have left because XMI shouldn't have been totally deleted but they just can't do anything which is kind of a weird thing to do um, yeah I think they have to become the government so they're going to restructure so they're going to spend so it's local with challengers regular three they're gonna spend six on this. What is re when they restructure, they gain three. Difficulty is three though. I think they're gonna spend five. They really don't wanna go down. And they're gonna try to become culture. Let's just put that in right now. And then roll this task. So five. Challenger, submit. Three successes. Awesome. So they they gain three, which brings them back to 14. But because it was a complete success, they gain two more, which brings them to 16 again. And 
They are now the government of Domenico. Okay, so XMI has lost almost... They, Thales is their only Hubbard system right now. Wow. Okay. I think in Domenico, they're doing well. So in Luria, okay, so 8th Avenue is definitely going to try. They've got 8 tech. They're going to totally subvert Luria. Like, why wouldn't they? They got lots of money, lots of influence. Shouldn't keep saying money. Always call them money. Anyways, they got lots of influence, so they're going to totally do that. And they're using tech versus culture, which isn't helpful. Um, well, it does make sense that it could be. But it doesn't fit the paper, rock, scissors. Anyways, so tech versus culture, and they're going to subvert the local government. So they are going to spend how much to do this? If they're the dominance was four. I think they're going to spend six because they really want to succeed. It'll still have them with two. Three, four. Three successes. Okay, so they succeed. So it drops them to two. And then they succeed, and what do they get? Three successes. Subverting. Gain two and reduce the dominant by three. So they lost a little bit here. And then the dominant gets reduced by three. Okay, so, so what does support do? It increases you by, I believe it was two. Two and one? Is that what I did? Maybe we'll have to watch the video. Double check. Okay, so House Susperata is now only at three tech. They probably should have went first. Oops. Okay, so they are going to um, I think they're gonna invest. Uh, local with challengers regular three. That is all too difficult. Investing is hard in this. I might have to look at that. Oh, they can invest. They can do a venture though. Okay, so I spent three versus three. zero successes. It's going to drop into zero. Their business did not go well. Okay, so House Luria is going to... They can't suppress because then they'll also knock out their ally. Uh, they can invest in the system. They're going to invest in the system. It makes sense. They might end up help, helping House Sosperata, and it'll be good. So, the difficulty is local with challengers, regular three. And how much can they gain through investment? Seven. So, they're going to spend six on this no I think they're going to spend five on this that makes more sense versus three so I went down to a nine originally to do this and now they have four successes so they do really really well they gain ten because it's a crit they gain twelve Ooh, 
Okay, so they got 21 now. But everybody else also gains one because they just made things better in the system. So they keep Hostess Barretta alive, but unfortunately also help out uh, the mob. Okay, final system, the hub, finally. Okay, so Hostess should go first. They have four tech. They are also going to uh, do a venture. And that might be able to help them out. The difficulty is uh, local with challengers, three. They really need to go all in on these investments. Let's see, can they succeed on this? Oh, I see a 10. Oh god, they failed. They're doing terribly at zero. And what is the failure going to be? They can't lose. They can't. There's no target. I think they're going to induce introduce a foreign faction. I think they're going to bring XMI in. It kind of makes sense. So their investments and stuff worked with XMI to do this. XMI comes in at 3E. Okay, so they tried to work in tech and all they did was bring a rival, bring in another faction. Okay, well that was terrible. So that, that means XMI, who just got brought in, gets to do something. Oh no, if they just got brought in, they don't get to do anything. So, 8th Avenue, they're going to subvert, or 8th Avatar, totally going to subvert Luria. They're going to spend a bunch to do it. Um, tech versus culture. Okay, and four difficulty, because they're the dominant. Oh, that looks really good. Three successes. Oh, okay. So they spent four on that. Let's look at the outcome. So they subverted. They gained two and reduced the dominant by three. But because it was a crit, they don't just gain two, they gain two more. So go back up to that what they were before. And the dominant goes down to 17. So successfully subverted them. Good job. Okay. So Luria. Luria is going to invest. It's the hub. Super important. They could suppress everybody, but investment seems to make more sense for them. They're going to make a ton of money if they do this right. So I'm going to spend five on that. And the difficulty and challenge system is uh, local challengers, regular three. Five dice. Look at that. So they drop down to 12 for the spending, just so we can track easier. And they have five successes, which is glorious. It's not a double crit, but it is a crit. So, what do they do? Investment, investment, investment. They gain seven, 10, 12. So they move up to 24. Woo! That was good investment. And all of the others gain one. Again, they're keeping Sosperito on life support. Some mind game. Close to four. Unfortunately, all this 
awesome economic and cultural progress also strengthens Thanks, Dan. Hopefully see you there. So there we go. I think that is that is it for all the actions. What I'm gonna do is take a little break and take some lunch and then come back and figure out all the events that this created. Just gonna create all these different events that I'm gonna record and then the players are gonna hear about that during play. It's gonna be pretty cool. Anyways. Thanks, Dan, for coming. I hope everybody on YouTube thinks this is interesting, and uh, there we go. Thanks. Oh, got to bring up my screen.